Hi Lana, hello and welcome once again uh, to Lana's Coach. So today we are going to look at uh, the various types of databases and of course uh, we are also going to look at the uh, models that are associated with these particular uh, databases. So uh, maybe before we look at uh, these particular types of databases or models, it's very important to understand uh, what database is, what data is, right? So we all know that data, uh, these are actually uh, some kind of um, facts or raw facts, yeah, uh, or concepts, right? And then we have databases. Uh, here is actually, or we refer to it as a repository or a collection of data, right? That can be uh, easily accessed, managed, and updated. Of course, retrieved wherever uh, they are needed. So before we proceed and looking at, uh, to look at the various types of uh, databases, if you are joining us for the very first time, always feel free to uh, subscribe to our channel so that at least when you upload new videos, you can always uh, follow along, right? All right, thanks. So we have five major types of databases, right? Uh, of course, we have hierarchical, object-oriented, we have network, relational, and no SQL. No SQL actually is the latest one. Uh, but we have had quite a number of databases, uh, time immemorial. Like we had the uh, the old types of databases, hierarchical and network, right? Object-oriented, object we have different or two types of object uh, databases that we need to uh, get familiar with in this particular uh, video. So let's look at the first one, hierarchical databases, right? So this hierarchical database is based on a model uh, known as or on a hierarchical uh, model, right? And this particular data model is where data is organized into a tree like structure, as you can see from this particular diagram, right? So there's some kind of hierarchy, yeah? So the data here are stored as records which are connected through uh, links. So the more nodes we have, they will always be arranged uh, in a particular uh, hierarchy. So it's just like having a folder and then you have subfolders and so on, right? So we have the advantages of this particular hierarchical model that's simple to construct and operate, as you can see, right? And of course, how they are organized is very, very uh, easy to follow. Uh, the main disadvantage is that navigation and procedural nature of processing is that is normally undertaken in this particular uh, model, right? And database is visualized as a linear arrangement of records, which reminds us of the file system, right? And there's a little scope uh, for query optimization uh, since we have linear arrangement of records. So we can't really query different uh, parts of the databases, right? The second one is the network databases, right? A network, as you can see from this particular diagram, right? Uh, is a model uh, that was a progression from the hierarchical database and was designed to solve uh, some of the model problems that was experienced uh, from the previous uh, database and that was lack of flexibility. Yeah, Remember data was captured in a linear format in hierarchical model but in a network at least now we have uh, some kind of flexibility. So you can see that uh, from this particular diagram, uh, most uh, entities or objects are what we refer to as the parent, uh, the parent entity and the child entity. So here the child entities have a way of linking uh, to multiple uh, parent uh, entities, right? So it has its own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the first advantage is that it is able to model complex relationships and uh, represent semantics, you can add and delete on the relationships, right? Of course, we can handle most situations for modeling using record types and uh, relationship types. So these ones are the main advantages. The other disadvantage that was experienced actually from the previous model is the navigation and procedural nature of processing, right? It's very, very cumbersome and it com contains complex array of pointers that needs to be read through a set of records. So these are some of the um, uh, problems or disadvantages that are experienced from this particular uh, network model. 
The other type of databases or model, as we have mentioned, is object-oriented databases, right? Uh, most of the current databases use the object option, right? So an object-oriented databases uh, or object database management system is a database that is based on object-oriented programming. So if you are good in application uh, development uh, using these low-level languages, uh, then you can always understand how object-oriented database function. Yeah? So the data is represented and stored in the form of objects, right? And these particular objects can always uh, be uh, linked to over the network, right? On what we call procedural uh, database programming, right? So we have a particular uh, diagram here showing the various objects that are arranged in the form of classes, right? So they also ha come in different uh, flavors, as I mentioned. We have object-oriented data models and object-rational models, right? Like in object-oriented, you have seen that several models have been proposed for implementing a database system that uses these particular programming languages that you have mentioned. It could be C, C++, and so on. Uh, for the object-oriented, it builds on top of uh, what we refer to as the relational models, right? So it incorporates the relational systems a model and maybe bring on board some object uh, option. So those are, uh, or that is object-oriented databases. Then we have relational databases, which we need to actually be familiar with because most databases uh, use this particular a form of relational. So a relational database is a type of database that stores and organizes data in related data points. So that is organized into tables. Uh, these tables we normally refer to them as entities that are linked to some kind of data, right? So in this particular diagram, you can see we have entity, right? Like three entities, customer orders, products that have relationship, right? So those, those are kind of lines links to the different entities and each and every entity comprises of some kind of attributes so we have a lot to understand about relational data uh, a database and data model right so in my previous video uh, i will actually talk more about relational data model on how we can model this using entity relationship diagram right so it was proposed actually by edward code Right, so you can see this. It was actually first commercialized in 1981 uh, to 1982 or thereabout. Right, so it also supports several free open source uh, systems such as MySQL, uh, PostgreSQL. You also have uh, My uh, MS SQL Server. Right, so it can be supported by different database management uh, system. So apart from that, we have uh, another one, I think from my list, this is the final one. Uh, no SQL databases, right? So no SQL databases simply means there's no relational data, right? So they do not uh, require a fixed schema. So no SQL is used for big data analytics and real-time web apps with homongous data storage needs. So examples of no SQL databases are MongoDB, we have Neo. J and of course Cassandra, right? So, uh, my good learner, those are the typical examples of databases uh, that we have, and of course, the various models that are as associated with these particular uh, databases. So, uh, subsequently, I'm going to talk more about uh, relationship, da uh, relational data model, or uh, the different, uh, the various categories of relational databases, so that we have a firm understanding of how they operate and function. All right, uh, thanks.